Hello everyone, I hope you're all keeping well, healthy and happy. In this video, we're going to be speaking about hypersanity. Now, I've personally spoken about how the rulers of this world, the powers that should not be, are hypersane. I've also pointedly remarked that they are insane, and this confuses folks, because in the popular mind, there's this erroneous belief that hypersanity and insanity are diametrically opposed. They aren't. Hypersanity is a type of insanity. But what is it exactly? I suppose the best way to describe it is that it's the end result of extreme self-deception. Of course, most of us deceive ourselves in small ways in one way or another, and there's a very good reason for that. Self-deception holds together our sense of self by shielding us from truths that threaten to undermine our ego integrity. A person on the verge of ego disintegration as a result of circumstances or through their own actions makes use of frenzied, self-deceptive ego defences like denial, repression, splitting and so on. The loss of perspective that can result from this, that is to say the state of hypersanity, can in itself be counted as a mental disorder. This is according to most experts like Dr. Neil Burton. Now our ego defences that we were talking about protect us from fearsome truths such as the fact that in fighting monsters, we can become monsters ourselves. Let me give you a concrete example of this. If a country sends a soldier to a foreign land to fight a war, and let's say that soldier knows in the back of their mind that they're really fighting for corporate interest groups, and let's further say that the country orders that soldier or his commanding officer orders that soldier to kill innocent civilians and the soldier follows through with that. What happens? That soldier will, will, will end up in a state of inner crisis. Okay? He'll end up, he or she will end up in a state of inner crisis, in spiritual turmoil because they have contravened their own moral standards. They've contravened society's moral standards. They've contravened the universal moral standards which may exist in natural law. Okay? In modern times, we call this post-traumatic stress disorder, but I don't think that really does it justice in terms of what's really happening to the person. This internal crisis that's experienced really comes about because you can't reconcile your actions with who you thought you were. Okay, so it shatters your own worldview of who you thought you were. Now, there's two ways that a person can deal with the situation at hand in those circumstances. One is that they can accept it, acknowledge it, and hopefully learn and grow from it. Okay, that's a very hard thing to do. But it would also help that person to reform their character in doing so. But there's another more darker path, let us say, okay? The darker path, when one embarks on that, involves having an out-of-control ego. And that out-of-control ego will try and justify everything that you do or did, even if it is blatantly morally wrong. Okay? Now, this type of out-of-control ego, this potential, uh, this, this potential towards spiraling into a state of hypersanity, blinds us to the truth. It blinds us to external realities. And a person suffering from that tends to end up becoming solipsistic, where only their internal worldview matters. The way they perceive things matters. Everybody else's perceptions don't matter. Okay? Other people don't matter. And that can also lead into a state of becoming nihilistic, self-destructive, 
Because why does it all matter? That's the type of thinking they emerge with if they follow that route. Okay? A person who is afflicted with hypersanity has very little capacity for consciousness, for spontaneity, or any real, true intimacy. He or she is no longer able to reach the numinous in their own being. Because of this spiritual turmoil, they become trapped in a vicious cycle. The more afflicted the person is, the less able they are to reason. You might wonder why is that important? The philosopher Aristotle pointed out that the distinctive function of human beings is to reason, and therefore happiness for human beings relies on a life of reason. He further stated that reason begets freedom. Freedom begets knowledge. Knowledge applied properly is wisdom, and wisdom begets happiness. So the key to happiness is wisdom, acting in a wise way, right? Because wisdom is the doing of something, whereas knowledge is just the knowing of something, right? It's the understanding. The philosopher Diogenes spoke about the necessity of parhesia as a crucial part of being able to reason. That Greek word, roughly translated, would equate to free speech or free expression, full expression, something like this. And that's relevant because it has a place in in how you navigate in this world, right? How you navigate the difficulties, the moral decisions that you have to make, and so on and so forth. It's part of the trivium, okay? And it also ties into the logos, right? The concept of logic, which we have derived in various societies, comes about because we're allowed to express our ideas and play with ideas and speak freely. Of course, we're not allowed to do that anymore these days, but nonetheless, putting that aside, the fact of the matter is that free speech is necessary in order to have a society that is logical. Now, there's an interesting story about Diogenes, which I'd like to share with yourselves. It's not necessarily relevant, but I think you might, might find is useful. Diogenes used to stroll around Athens in broad daylight, brandishing an ignited lamp. And whenever curious people stopped to ask what he was doing, he would reply, I'm just looking for a human being. Okay, it's a very, very profound statement. Now, Diogenes was known as a cynic, but he was trying to say something in that. If that story is true, we don't know. But he was trying to say something with that. What was he trying to say? Well, there's a few things, actually. One is that he was looking for the inner light in human beings, that illumination from within, of the human spirit. Okay? There are many other layers to that as well. But I'll leave you to dissect those in your own time. Getting back to self-deception, however, it's oftentimes rooted in unconscious or semi-conscious fears. The fear of falling short of the standards that are set for us or that we set for ourselves, right? Because of that, because we have these troubles, this fear, we end up facing the real potential of a breakdown of our egos. And I'm talking about a healthy ego. We're not talking about the out-of-control type of egos, right? The ego is basically part of the self. But um, that breakdown of the ego, well, there's actually many reasons why that can happen. Sometimes it happens because of our own actions, which we've talked about. Other times it can happen because of circumstances. When something happens to you instead of you having done something. Uh, so so there's, there's a myriad of reasons why that happens. And some of them even involve severe mental illness. Like say in cases of severe uh, clinical depression or bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. And in those cases the deception becomes more pronounced. Now... 
it need not be a one-way street. Because you'll notice that at each point, there's an opportunity to take a path which doesn't lead to more suffering for oneself. Okay? And even in cases of mental illness, by the way, a lot of people probably won't understand this, but I'll share this with you anyway. Mental illness can itself be a route to self-knowledge. And this might surprise people, right? You see, certain troubles of the mind can be a cry from our deepest human nature. And out of this cry of spiritual turmoil, some individuals who are naturally gifted begin to exhibit certain problem-solving skills or creative skills artistic skills and so on. And those themselves can actually empower the person to heal from their experiences and their actions and to grow from that as well. This is something that was detailed by Carl Jung. He saw this firsthand. But this is not the case for the person who is prone to hypersanity, the person who keeps choosing the wrong paths. Okay. At this juncture, let me say this as well. There are three types of people who exist apart from society. And oftentimes people confuse them because they don't really know how to define individuals. Right? Uh, because we have, for the most part, collectivized society in very unhealthy ways, it becomes hard for that said collectivized society to distinguish between different types of individuals and their behaviors. So you have the fully sane, the insane, and the hyper sane who all exist apart from society, who want to assert to a greater or lesser degree their individuality. Okay? The problem with hypersanity is that it leads a person to being in a constant state of distress and disorder. Okay? It leads to a person being in a continuous state of chaos. I'm going to, at this point, give you an illustrative example of a hyper-sane fictional character. Okay? We're going to use the Joker from Batman. And... This might make some of you laugh, but actually this is a serious character study. Because rather than a man who acts in conjunction with morality and rationale, rather than being that, that type of man, the Joker acts above this standard. Okay, He acknowledges it, but disregards it, and affects society in a way that is incomprehensible to the citizens of Gotham, you'll notice that he is constantly justifying his actions as well. Okay? His extreme self-delusion and solipsism creates chaos. He is the personification of chaos, and because of his extreme self-delusion and solipsism, his mind becomes badly broken. In fact, so badly broken that it becomes something else entirely which is devoid of any humanity. He becomes inhumane. You see, his mind, all that made him the man he was, is gone, and something new takes its place. Thus, the Joker isn't insane in the typical ways that we might understand it. Okay? He doesn't suffer from the typical types or forms of mental illness the society is used to. He is fully aware of what he is doing. He knows the exact consequences of his actions. He's fully cognizant of natural law. He just disregards it. But he is able to comprehend and understand what he's doing. In fact, he understands it so well that he doesn't care. And in sacrificing his humanity and his sanity, he gains a unique ability, and that is heightened perception. Okay? The Joker has an out-of-control ego. That's what we were talking about earlier. 
Now, everything that I've just described about the Joker from Batman is applicable to the rulers of this world, the powers that should not be. That is exactly the kind of characters they have. That is who they are. Okay? They know what they're doing. They're fully cognizant of it. They just don't care. They're devoid of true care. Okay? This is what I was talking about when I was trying to explain to people that these folks are hyper-sane. Doesn't mean they're actually sane, but they're suffering from a type of insanity where they have become completely enclosed in their own uh, solipsistic mindset. Okay? So, just like with the Joker, to him it's all a game, and in the same way, to them it's just a game and it doesn't really matter anyway. Okay? That's the thing. So... I hope that's provided some clarity for you with regards to this particular topic. And I'm sure that you'll have many comments, many questions to ask with regards to this even. And uh, if you do, feel free to share those. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate all your support and your kindness in helping to try and get a lot of information across to people. And uh, I wish you all uh, a, a prosperous day. Thank you very much for watching. Take good care of yourselves and God bless every one of you.